Released in 1991, Silence of the Lambs is a disturbing thriller full of suspense, where Jodie Foster plays a young training FBI agent called Clarice Starling, who is haunted by the memories of hearing lambs screaming in her childhood. She is recruited to try and track down a dangerous criminal called Buffalo Bill, played by Ted Levine, who kidnaps and kills his victims in order to make a skin suit. In order to get inside the mind of Buffalo Bill, Clarice seeks advice from a dangerous criminal inmate called Hannibal Lecter, who is as dangerous as he is intellectually genius, who also has an appetite for human flesh. Hannibal tries to lead Clarice to the path of tracking down Buffalo Bill, while also being curious about her and the lambs of her past. The question is, can Buffalo Bill be stopped in time to save his latest victim, and will the screams of the lambs ever be silenced? So today, we are exploring the movie that not only gave us lots of chills, but also a lot of it rubs the lotion on its skin or it gets the hose again memes, as we look into 10 amazing facts about Silence of the Lambs. Let's check it out. Number 10, Hannibal Lecter on the printed page. The Silence of the Lambs is indeed based on the book of the same name by American writer Thomas Harris and was published in 1988, just three years before the movie's release. It's actually the second part of a quadrilogy of books based on the character Hannibal Lecter. The first was Red Dragon, which was published in 1981, with the third being Hannibal in 1999 and Hannibal Rising in 2006. Thomas Harris worked as a journalist during the 60s, where he interviewed several serial killers on death row, where it's believed that the inmates that Harris had met and interviewed were the inspirations for both the Hannibal Lecter and Buffalo Bill characters. Mental patient Dykes Askew Simmons in particular is said to be a huge source of inspiration for the Hannibal Lecter character. It's also been pointed out that there are many similarities between Buffalo Bill and real-life serial killers Ed Gein and Ted Bundy. The book was hugely successful upon its release, where it went on to win several awards and gain many fans, one of them even being children's writer Roald Dahl, of all people. Number 9, Silence of the Lambs wasn't the first Hannibal movie. Despite the fact that Silence of the Lambs was hugely successful and started a series of movies featuring Anthony Hopkins as the killer with a taste for fine dining, Silence of the Lambs wasn't the first movie to explore the strange and demented world of Hannibal. That was a 1986 movie called Manhunter, which was based on the first Hannibal book, Red Dragon. It featured Brian Cox as Hannibal Lecter and was directed by Michael Mann, who would go on to direct other gritty street crime thrillers, such as Collateral and the Miami Vice movie. It was produced by the Dino De Laurentiis Entertainment Group and had its name changed from Red Dragon to Manhunter because a year before its release, a movie called The Year of the Dragon came out. Manhunter tanked both critically and financially upon its release, where it would become an obscure and often forgot about movie, thanks to being overshadowed by the eventual release of Silence of the Lambs. That and the fact that Red Dragon would be remade into a movie in 2002. In a film set in the same universe as the Silence of the Lambs movie, acting as a prequel to that movie, which has only made Manhunter even more of an obscure curiosity. However, that doesn't mean we should completely overlook Manhunter, as it still has a lot to offer. And there have even been some claims that it influenced forensic TV shows like CSI. Number 8. Silence of the Lambs was going to be directed by a Hollywood actor. The Silence of the Lambs novel hadn't even been released yet when Orion Pictures were making plans to adapt the story onto the big screen. However, thanks to Manhunter, producer Dino De Laurentiis owned the rights to the Hannibal Lecter character. Orion Pictures reached out to De Laurentiis and negotiated selling them the rights, but he gave them the Hannibal rights for free, simply because Manhunter was so disappointing at the box office. He obviously had no idea that Silence of the Lambs would be as successful as it was. Orion then made a deal with Hollywood tough guy Gene Hackman to direct the movie, as well as star as FBI agent Jack Crawford. 
and Hackman also agreed to pay half of the rights to turn Silence of the Lambs into a movie. So with him directing, financing and starring in, it seemed pretty airtight that Silence of the Lambs was going to be a hands-on Gene Hackman vehicle. Except for one problem. Number seven, Gene Hackman found the script to be too violent. Script writer Ted Talley was hired to write the script for Silence of the Lambs in 1987, one year before the book's release. He was able to do this as he had an early advanced copy of the book, as he was a personal friend of the author, Thomas Harris. However, Hackman didn't like the script, finding it to be too violent, so he dropped out of the project, and thus Silence of the Lambs lost half of its funding for the rights, as Hackman was to pay half of the funds. This could have marked the end of Silence of the Lambs production. However, Orion were not ready to give up on the production yet and decided to fully fund the movie themselves. And director Jonathan Demme was approached to direct. And after reading the novel and script, he agreed to do it. The irony is the last movie he directed up until that point was the mobster comedy Married to the Mob, which is worlds apart from Silence of the Lambs. In fact, the song Goodbye Horses by Q Lazarus is famously known for appearing in Silence of the Lambs. But three years earlier, Demi had also used the song in Married to the Mob 2. So the fact that he can go from something funny and lighthearted like Married to the Mob to Silence of the Lambs shows what a versatile director he was. Married to the Mob is another movie that I have a lot of love for and actually find to be a very underrated movie and one that I intend to explore further in another episode one day. Number six, it casts the movie or it gets the hose again. Jodie Foster loved the Silence of the Lambs book and lobbied for the role of Clarice Starling. But director Jonathan Demme wasn't convinced. He wanted Michelle Pfeiffer in the role, as he had previously worked with her on Married to the Mob, but she turned it down due to the movie's grisly subject matter. Then Meg Ryan was also offered the role, but she too turned it down due to the subject matter once again. Then there was talks of casting Laura Dern, but it was felt that she wasn't a big enough name. Till finally they went with Foster due to her passion for the project, and going by Foster's performance, they made the right choice. Sean Connery was the first choice to play Hannibal Lecter, but he turned it down. Other actors considered for the role include Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro, and Al Pacino, till Anthony Hopkins was cast due to his performance in The Elephant Man, where through the role of Hannibal, he delivered a memorable, haunting performance. Actor Scott Glenn was cast as Agent Jack Crawford, who was originally written for Gene Hackman, as mentioned. And Ted Levine was cast as Buffalo Bill, a performance so chilling, it rivals Hopkins' portrayal of Hannibal Lecter. Number five, tiny details that bring Hannibal Lecter to life. There are two standout features that stick out about the Hannibal Lecter character and the movie in general, and that being Hopkins' calm yet haunting delivery of lines and that weird creepy mask he wears. Hopkins based his style of talking in Silence of the Lambs on the How 9000 character in 2001 A Space Odyssey, who like Hannibal, has a habit of delivering dastardly lines in a polite but deaf tone manner, making it even more creepy. He also took inspiration from Catherine Hepburn and Truman Capote to create the voice. And he overall only has 16 minutes of screen time in Silence of the Lambs, and while acting the part, Hopkins did his best to never blink, and yeah, if you watch the movie, he hardly ever blinks. One interesting feature that was in the book but wasn't in the movie was a physical detail in which Hannibal Lecter has six fingers on his left hand, whereas in the movie, he only has five digits. The mask that we see Hannibal wear, which has no doubt inspired many Halloween costumes, was designed by Ed Cubbery, who made masks for NHL goalkeepers. Yep, not since Jason Voorhees has there been a more terrifying mask that's linked to ice hockey. And supposedly when Hopkins first started working with Jodie Foster, he was actually really nervous on the account that she had just previously won an Academy Award. Yeah, I just find that snippet to be really cute. Number four, filming locations. The shoot for Silence of the Lamb started on November 1989 and finished in March 1990. It was mainly shot around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with additional shots being filmed at West Virginia. The infamous pit that Buffalo Bill keeps in his basement where he torments his victims was a multi-leveled set that was built in an airplane turbine factory that was no longer in use. The pit could be entered via a trap door at the bottom of the pit. 
But despite this, actress Brooke Smith, who played Catherine Martin, said that filming those scenes of her in the pit really messed with her head, as she really threw herself into the part, as if she was really trapped in the pit and that no one was helping her, which made her feel the agony of the character. In a rare move for its time, certain scenes were actually filmed at the FBI Training Academy in Virginia. And the FBI apparently even helped with the film crew with making the FBI aspects of the movie more authentic. And some real life FBI staff members actually acted in some scenes that took place at the Academy. Number 3. Silence of the Lambs has cameos from two famous filmmakers. Silence of the Lambs is such a dark and twisted movie, you may have missed two cameos that turn up in the film, both of whom being big time filmmakers. One is the legendary Roger Corman, who briefly shows up as an unimpressed FBI director. Corman is a producer and director who has given us many awesome schlock classics like The Raven, the original Little Shop of Horrors, and Death Race 2000. The other cameo is a little harder to spot, but it's none other than horror movie director George Romero, who gave us his Night of the Living Dead film series. In a blink and you'll miss it cameo, he's one of the agents who takes Clarice away when she tries to speak to Hannibal. Because, why not I guess? It's always fun when a movie has easter eggs, as well as spotting them. Number two, the score was recorded in Munich. The haunting music of Silence of the Lambs was composed by Canadian composer Howard Shaw, whom had previously scored other well-known movies like After Hours, The Fly, and Big. Shaw stated that he wanted his music for Silence of the Lambs to blend in with the atmosphere of the film. So when the audience watch Silence of the Lambs, they won't notice the score, and that it's just naturally part of the fabric of the movie itself. And I think that he does achieve this. It is haunting and sometimes foreboding, while also being tragic and somber. It's really powerful and does add to the movie's atmosphere and enhances it. So it's definitely a score that makes the movie better and completes the overall experience. What's interesting about the score is that Shaw composed it in Munich with the Munich Symphony Orchestra, making Silence of the Lambs something of a transatlantic production. Shaw and director Jonathan Demme would collaborate several years later for the movie Philadelphia. And he has more recently composed the movie Hugo and the Hobbit film series. Number one, third movie to win all five categories at the Academy Awards. Unlike Manhunter, Silence of the Lambs proved to be a Hannibal Lecter movie that could sink its teeth into the box office, as it was huge when it came out. It was released in February 1991 around the States, and would go on to make nearly $273 million on a $19 million budget, making it the fifth highest grossing movie of that year. Silence of the Lambs also won Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Adapted Screenplay, making it the third movie to win Academy Awards in all top five categories. The two previous movies to do this was the 1935 movie, It Happened One Night, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Silence of the Lambs is still just as big now as it was back in 1991, as it still gets praised by fans and film historians, and often makes it onto best movies of all time lists, along with its characters Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling being equally celebrated. Silence of the Lambs brought a terrifying new realism, not only to horror movies, but to movies in general. What makes it such a memorable movie experience is the haunting and foreboding atmosphere it creates. It shows us the bare skin of what a dark and terrifying place the world can be sometimes, as well as the characters. Each character in Silence of the Lambs has their motivations and reasons for doing what they do, but are displayed in a way that's captivating, leaving you eager to go on a journey with them to see what will happen next. It has plenty of chills and suspense, and even now, 30 years later, that suspense hasn't diminished. So if you have an appetite for suspenseful cinema, then Silence of the Lambs is the perfect fine dining for you. I think Silence of the Lambs marks a turning point when movies started to get a little edgier and a little grittier. Yes, cinematic boundaries were pushed in the past, particularly in the 70s. But to me, Silence of the Lambs just takes it that one step further. That one extra step that just makes you feel kind of uncomfortable in a confronting way. So if you want a good thriller with interesting characters, then you can't go wrong with Silence of the Lambs. Anyway, I'm Minty, and like and subscribe or it gets the hose again. See ya!